Welcome to Inside New York. We're about to open the fall season on Broadway. And what could be better than celebrating with the unveiling of the newly renovated James Earl Jones Theater right here on Broadway. We're going to be celebrating the occasion for some of the legendary film and theater actors and performances. So, you better stay right there because it's all right here on Inside Please welcome the chairman and CEO of the Schubert Organization, Robert E. Wenkel. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming. Today, we celebrate the final minutes of the historic Court Theater and dedicate the new, even more historic, James Earl Jones Theater. This this major construction project has been many years in the making, beginning with a series of air right transactions, including securing a New York City theater rehabilitation bonus, which required a very complex urban land use review, all overseen by Schubert Vice President of Real Estate, Julio Peterson. Thank you, Julio! The project continued through the pandemic under the leadership of our Senior Vice President of Facilities, John Darby, and a virtual army of Schubert employees from our Facilities Department, as well as many talented contractors. We appreciate each and every one of you, and thank you for all that work. You'll soon see the interior work of the talented architects, Francisco Russo's painstaking research and brilliant vision is on, a, is on gorgeous display in the restored theater, and Costco Greenwood's creative design for the new annex is exciting, showing both the old and the new, and you can see the new over there. The rededication of a 112-year-old landmark is also the perfect time to recognize the contributions of those in our Broadway community who have been overlooked in our history, specifically those in the BIPOC community who have performed on our stages or worked behind the scenes. Let this be the beginning of the next 125 years celebrating diversity, equity, and inclusivity at this theater and every Broadway theater. And finally, we dedicate this building as the James Earl Jones Theater. We honor one of the most legendary Broadway and film stars of all times. He's played 21 Broadway shows, including 14 at Schubert Theaters. He is one of the few EGOTs in the world, and that says it all, almost. Because James Earl Jones is not only a great artist, he is one of the most beloved actors on Broadway. Unfortunately, James and his family felt it best for him not to come today for health reasons, but we had the opportunity to visit last week right here at his theater with his family, and we'll be showing you the video a little bit later so you can appreciate how he was overwhelmed with the building. In talking with him, it's easy to see why people in our community care for him so very much. He loves the stage. He's warm, kind, generous, genuine. What could possibly be better than that to become the spirit of this theater? And now I salute that spirit by welcoming Tony Award, Tony Award nominee and friend of the Schubert Organization, Norm Lewis. Thank you. I have often dreamed of a far-off place where a 
hero's welcome would be waiting for me Where the crowds will cheer when they see my face And a voice keeps saying, this is where I'm meant to be I'll be there someday I will go the distance I will find my way If I can be strong I know every mile Will be worth my while When I go the distance I'll be right where I belong Down an unknown road To embrace my fate Though that road may wander It will lead me to you And a thousand years Would be worth the wait It might take a lifetime But somehow I'll see it through And I won't look back I will go the distance I will stay my track No, I won't accept defeat It's an uphill slope But I won't lose hope Till I go the distance And my journey is complete Oh, yes But to look beyond the glory Is the hardest part For a hero's welcome Is standing by the heart its arms I don't care how far I will go the distance till I find my hero's welcome face its harms till I find my heroes welcome waiting in your arms thank you Thank you so much. Oh, I just want to say I am beyond honored to be here opening this amazing theater. It is such a dream come true, and I'm really emotional about this and to be a part of this. So thank you, all the powers that be. So next, please welcome the director and the star of this season's The Piano Lesson at the Bar Barrymore Theater, Samuel L. Jackson. And Miss Latanya Richardson. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Uh, good afternoon. Um, what a pleasure and a joy and an honor to be here to say a few words about Mr. Jones. Um, if you are an actor, or you aspire to be an actor, or you pounded the pavement in the streets looking for jobs and doing things. One of the standards that we always had was to be a James L. Jones, to have that level of accomplishment, to be able to enunciate and <laughs> make people listen to you and go, oh my God, I wish I had that voice. But he didn't get here, you know, just by accident. He did his first Broadway play in 1957. 
and did his last Broadway play in 2015. So that means there were 19 Broadway productions between all the stuff that we saw him do and didn't have a chance to see him do. I only had an opportunity to see him once on stage and it was mesmerizing and fences. I wish I could have seen the Great White Hope. Mr. King was in there with him every night, so Woody knows how great he was and what that all meant. But it's uh, a wonderful, wonderful thing to know that James Earl Jones' name will be here in perpetuity. And children that don't know who he is or kids that only know him as Dark Vader or from the voice of the Lion King will have an opportunity to come to a theater that's named after a man who stood for excellence. And for us to have his name and August Wilson's name on the Great White Way is a very important thing. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to yes, please, be able to encourage audiences to just come and see what the theater is that's named after them, no matter what's inside it. And uh, we will uh, continue to raise up the names of some of the others of us who hope to reach this height in our careers. Thank you, Mr. Jones. And now I'd like to introduce the Tony winner, Mr. Brian Stokes Mitchell. Thank you all. It's so great to see everybody that showed up tonight. Uh, this is such a huge honor for me. Uh, James Earl Jones has been a, a huge influence on my life um, from the first time I met him when I was doing Roots the Next Generations and continually we, I, I got a chance to uh, work with him in, in uh, uh, some uh, benefit performances and some workshops as well. And um, I have to say he is one of those people that is on stage with me anytime I go on a stage. Um, I just uh, thought that's the guy that I want to be, that's the actor I want to be with that power, with that majesty, with that artistry, with that excellence that he has brought to every single role that he has ever done. And particularly when I was doing Ragtime, I remember on numerous occasions saying to myself when I was trying to get through a scene, what would James Earl Jones do here? So with that, Go out and tell our story Let it echo far and wide Make them hear you Make them hear you How justice was a battle And how justice was denied Make them hear you Make them hear you And say to those who blame us For the way we chose to fight That sometimes there are battles That are more than black or white And I could not put down my sword When justice was my right Make them hear you, make them hear you. Go out and tell our story to your daughters and your sons. Make them hear you, make them hear you. And tell them in our struggle we we're not the only ones Make them hear you Make them hear you Your sword can be a sermon Or the power of the pen Teach every child to raise his voice And then my brothers Then will justice be demanded by ten Righteous men make them hear you when they hear you. I'll be near you. Oh,
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the mayor of New York City, Mr. Mayor Eric Adams. I'm, I'm going to follow the direction from uh, Samuel L. Jackson. He said, you're a politician, so don't talk long. You know, make them hear you. Make them hear you. There's a subtext to being here today and honoring, you know, my childhood idol, uh, sitting in school, going to classes. I used to walk inside the school building, and on the back of the chair, they would have the dummy student. I didn't know why, I just couldn't learn. And it wasn't until I was sitting in college and looking at, looked at a documentary about dyslexia and realized I was just dyslexic, dyslexic. I learned differently, but I was able to learn and became on the dean's list after discovering that. But I read about James Earl Jones. He stuttered. He stuttered. And I knew if he was able to come, overcome that and use that rich voice to become the great actor that he is. I knew that anything was possible. And I knew that I can go from being dyslexic and rejected to being elected. I'm the mayor now. So this moment may be significant for a lot of people because we are putting the lights up with brother James Earl Jones. Broadway is back. Broadway is back. And there is no more moment for Broadway to be back than to have a nightlife mayor that enjoys Broadway. And to know that when the lights are on Broadway, they're on in America. COVID cannot stop us. And when we light up this theater with the name of James Earl Jones, those who use his story as a subtext to them overcoming their hurdles, it is such an inspiring moment. We used to crowd around the TV and watch every time we saw him on TV as children. From 1969, a different country it's a different country. We couldn't stand like this together and be inside and enjoy this. He pushed through. And because of that, no one will walk down this block again without looking up and seeing James Earl Jones. So on behalf of the people of this city, whereas in addition to his two Tony Awards, James has earned two Emmy Awards, a Grammy, an honorary Oscar, making him an esteemed EGOT. Today's renaming of this freshly renovated venue as the James Earl Jones Theater recognizes all he has contributed and imprint this enormously gifted actor, performer, and leader has made on our dynamic Broadway community. I join everyone in applauding this outstanding actor who has fostered diversity in the arts and shaped the history of theater in New York and beyond. Together, we look forward to the many ways this landmark theater will further enhance our culture landscape as we take bold steps to come back stronger from the pandemic. Now, therefore, I, Eric Adams, Mayor of the City of New York, do hereby proclaim Monday, September 12, 2022, in the City of New York as James Earl Jones Day. Okay, now we're going to do the unveil in a minute. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> take one second. 
So before we do the official unveil, I just want everyone to see the video I spoke about a little earlier. We were concerned that James may not be here today, so we had him here last week with his family, and I'm just going to run this two-minute two minute video. Let's roll it. I spoke my first line ever on Broadway for me in this theater. <laughs> I was a kid. I forget how old I was. But I had one line in a play that starred Ralph Bellamy and Mary Fickett. It was called Sunrise at Campobello. My first and only line in the, in the play. Mrs. Roosevelt, supper is served. But I said, M -m 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 -m. I couldn't get it out. I'm a stutterer. Mary Fickett stood there patiently. The audience knew I was having problems. I'm a young actor on stage for the first time, and I can't get my line out. But I, she was very patient till I got it out. Mrs. Roosevelt, supper is served, and I exited. I repeated that line every night for a year. Yeah. And then you became one of the greatest voices in the world. Well, I, I, I gained my voice. I found well, my voice. Well, you certainly yeah. did quite well at it. Yeah. So now, between the two of us, we're going to count to ten. <laughs> And we're going to do the unveil, unveil, <laughs> to my left. OK. OK, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's up there. Yeah. And we'll see you again next week on Inside New York.